Has, if the Lord has been good to you, someone say amen. amen. Come on, you could do better than that. I think those of you the internet, I want you to say it from wherever you're watching church. If the Lord has been good, someone say amen. amen. That's right, good. You know, wake up here this morning. Hallelujah. Ha! I like that. I don't know who said that laugh, but that made me laugh. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's give it up for those watching us live in the internet. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. You may not be here. You may not be here physically, but you are here in spirit and the same power that, that the same spirit of the living God that's here is here and dwells with you in the name of Jesus. And the same word that's going to be given here, we know you will also receive from wherever you are watching in the world right now. Thank you for tuning in. I've been... Um, this morning, the Lord told me to tell you guys, I mean, be prior to what I was, what I have uh, in store to preach, sometimes, and I, and I was dealing with this too, there'll be a day where sometimes we get anxious, and I talk about this a lot, and, there's, and this happens to, I believe, every single Christian in the world. I mean, it's just something that we sometimes struggle with. It's in our human nature sometimes to, uh, to put the weight of certain issues and certain, um, it could be a good issue and sometimes it could be a bad issue. But the point is, depending on whatever issue it may be, I guess when you say the word issue, you think of something negative, but sometimes even something good could be overwhelming. It's crazy, right? Sometimes you can have so much of, you know, I could give you the perfect example, right? Like um, someone that gets married, right? It's a great, beautiful day when you are, you know, it's one of the most beautiful days of your life, a wedding day and all that. But something so good sometimes can be so stressful that in the end, you don't even enjoy the, the whole process because you're there stressed out. Or another good thing could be a vacation, you're supposed to go on a vacation to relax. Those are good things, right? But sometimes you get so stressed on making sure that everyone's coordinated, making sure that this is supposed to be like this, that's supposed to be like that. And even with something good, that way can make your vacation. You can come back more stressed than you actually were before you even left. Can I get an amen? So sometimes, but the reason why I'm bringing this up now is because I want you to focus on the weight. Now, with negative things, it doesn't, it's, it's also a bad thing. There's, that's a double negative right there because there's nothing good about something negative. And sometimes in the stresses of this world and the issues that we face, sometimes we begin to learn. And this is the word that he told me to say because I know this is for someone, and it was for me too. Trust in me instead of yourself. I'm going to say that again. Trust in me. This is what God told me, and this is what God telling you right now, and those of you watching me live as well. Sometimes there's weights in this world, and, you know, there's days that, I, that I've walked, and I've been like, you know, I've, I've allowed God. Remember, God fights our battles for us. Part of that trusting in God is understanding that he has everything under control. When you are in that zone, in that moment where you're just allowing God to flow and allowing God to handle your issues, you have a weight lifted off of you. There's days that I'm walking and I'm walking knowing God's in control. And then there's other days where I don't feel it. And I feel like I'm trusting in myself more than I'm trusting in God. Or am I the only one that that's happened to? And then there's some times where I'm like, I'm like, God, what is going on? I don't feel you now. I don't know. God's like, no. Look, yesterday you trusted in me, and today you're trusting in yourself. That's not my fault. That's your fault. That's not our fault. That's not, excuse me, God's, that's, this is not God's fault. This is our fault. Because we're the ones that need to let him and put our trust in him and allow him to operate. Not the other way around. Because then when you feel the weight of the pressures of this world, everything that's going on, whatever's going on in your exterior situation that you have no control over, you're allowing it to weigh you down. And what happens when you get weighed down, you're stressed out. What happens when you're stressed out, you're not focused and you are not going to be able to operate the way God wants you to operate. How can I operate in the supernatural if I'm operating in the natural, 
The supernatural way to operate is by allowing God to do what he does. And letting him fight the battles for you. So before I get into my word, I know I needed to say this to someone. Stop trusting in yourself and start trusting in God. Put your hands together if you believe that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had to say that. And I know that the Lord and the Lord was speaking to me. And it's like, wow, sometimes I, I, I fall into that. And there's times where I try to, uh, uh, man, you know, it's, 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 it's a battle. This is the battle between the flesh and the spirit. It's constant. And may not be something that you may say, oh, wow, that's the worst sin in the world. Hey, it may not be looking that bad uh, in the terms of, oh, you're not committing a horrible sin. But let me tell you, that can drag you down. That can make you miserable in your life. If you don't allow God to fight your battles for you. Because then the pressures of the world, the enemy will use it. The enemy will start lying to you. The enemy will try to manipulate you. And then he'll be saying, look, where's your God now? Look at the way you're feeling. Trust me, I'm being honest right now because it happens to me sometimes. And I got to rebuke that enemy. You better start speaking to your situations and rebuking and casting out any negative thoughts that the enemy would try to hinder you with. If God promises it for you, it will be yours. Begin to declare it. We have power of life and death in our tongue. Hallelujah. Preach. Come on now. I mean, excuse me, not preach. I'm preaching. <laughs> Receive what the Lord has for you. Why? Because there is a purpose, a divine purpose. And this is why the message of today is called Purpose Driven. I'm going to read now from Romans 8, 29 from the New Life Version. Verse 29 says, God knew from the beginning who would put their trust in him. So he chose. That's not it. Romans 8, 29, new. Okay, don't, don't pay attention to that. That's not the new living, new life version. Maybe we don't have to put I want you to pay attention to me. Turn that off. God knew from the beginning who would put their trust in him. So he chose them and made them to be like his son. Christ was first, and all those who belong to God are his brothers. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Father God, for all those that are tuning in live. I bless them. I bless every single person that's here, physically here. And I thank you, Father God, for the families they represent. I thank you, God, that there's going to be a mighty word for them and for including myself. Holy Spirit, have your way. Take over. You are welcome in this place, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Purpose. You see, God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for all of humanity, okay? God's purpose, if you want to, we're going to go way, way, way back from the beginning of time before he created the heavens and the earth. I've had a couple preachings on this. I'm not going to get into detail, but the initial purpose of our, our being was to glorify God, Jesus Christ. That was, the begin that was our main purpose. We know what happened. Man sinned. We fell short. Jesus had to come and restore what we messed up. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ. Someone say amen. <laughs> yeah. Now the purpose has shifted. Because once our purpose was solely we were pure. Now we got to have a flesh that we deal with and thank the Lord through the blood of Christ and through our repentance, we're cleansed as snow. Hallelujah. But now we have to face this battle. So the purpose has shifted. But there is a broad purpose for your life and there's also a distinctive purpose for your life. The broad, let's start with the broad. First of all, before we, we go to the broad, let's talk about <clears throat> let's, let's look at the, the definition of purpose. I want to look at it as a noun and as a verb. So as a noun, it's the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. And as a verb, it's described as <clears throat> have as one's intention or objective. 
So it's your intention. What is the purpose behind your purpose? <laughs> that we're going to get there soon. There's a lot of different types of purposes here. You got God's purpose. You have what God wants for his church, his people as a whole, that purpose. Then you have your own distinctive, specific purpose. And then we're going to get to why you have that purpose. Ooh, okay. But before we keep on, I don't want to get too fast on it. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Let's look at some synonyms for purpose. Cause, reason, point, justification, intention, your aim, your objective, your goal, the scheme, the ambition, aspiration, desire, wish, hope, benefit, merit, worth, gain, profit. Out of all the questions I find myself when I meet people, right, there's, and, and I know you guys, maybe some of you are in here, have this question. This is a very common question that most people in life, and even Christians, which the majority of us here are, and if you're not, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will surrender today to your king. Amen. We'll get there at the end. But for now... The question that most people in this life all go around is, what is my reason or what is my purpose in life? And you could be a Christian. And now we're talking about as, as, as children of God, we're all called in a broad perspective to glorify our king. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. Love your neighbor. And glorify God in everything you do. I'm going to read a verse on the broad perspective that God has for his people as a church, as a body of Christ. Who here is part of the body of Christ? Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We all have one common purpose, and it's to glorify God in everything we do. Now, your distinctive purpose, what's the reason for you to be alive? It's more than just making money and having a family and growing old. You see, there's big things in your life and your distinctive purpose. So many people want to know the reason why they're alive. You see, we know the broad perspective. We're glorifying God. Amen? In all that we do. But now your specific niche, you're a professor, you're a doctor, you're a carpenter, you or, uh, you probably work in, I don't know what, maybe you're a minister. Maybe one day you want to become a pastor. Ministerially, everyone has a distinctive purpose in this life. I want to read to you here. Isaiah 43, 18 to 21. Glorifying God in everything we do. This is our overall broad purpose. This is what it says here. This is so powerful. Pay attention, church. Isaiah 43, 18 through 21, verse 18. Remember not the former things, nor consider, this is the English Standard Version. Uh-huh, good. We got that right. Amen. Verse 19. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do not perceive it. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness. Wow, amen. And rivers in the desert. With, with the wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. Verse 21 says, the people whom I formed for myself. Come on now. For they might declare my praise. Come on now. That's just powerful in itself. I don't even need to preach about that. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the wilderness, if you're in the middle of the desert, where, where the driest places on earth is, your God will give you rivers, the land that will flow with milk and honey. When there looks like there's nothing, there will be a stream because you are chosen. You are the people that God formed you for himself. So that you may declare the praises of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We know that now, our overall. But now what happens if your purpose... There's people that they believe their purpose is, is the right one. Maybe it is true. Maybe it's not. 
how can you tell the difference? Well, what is the purpose behind your purpose? You see, Saul, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about King Saul, I'm talking about Saul, Saul that later became known as Paul. But you see, Saul, before he was Paul, he was a, he was a Jew and a very high-ranked Jew, an extremely educated Jew. And Paul, and excuse me, Saul, I'm not going to say Paul just yet, even though we know him as the Apostle Paul. He later on becomes the Apostle Paul. You see, what ended up happening was, is that he had a purpose before he actually found his true purpose. Some of you in here, maybe some of you watching me live, you have a purpose. I don't know what it is, but is it your true purpose? Because Saul thought that his purpose was the right one. Because he was a Jew. Who is this Jesus? Who are these people talking and preaching about Jesus Christ? That is blasphemy against what we believe. So what he did, he would persecute Christians. Paul, excuse me, Saul. Let's get stick with Saul. It's hard for me to always talk to him as Saul. I don't like bringing up all the negative stuff. But when he was Saul, he had a purpose. And he thought he was right. And he was persecuting Christians, thinking that he was doing what he needed to do that was, was pleasing. He thought it was pleasing to his God. He actually thought that killing Christians was something that God wanted him to do. Whoa, my God, am I preaching to someone here this morning? Some of us may have a purpose that you think it is from God, but it is the total opposite. What is it that you're doing? You think because you're probably making money that it's the perfect will of God? Oh my God. And I'm not saying making money is wrong. God wants us all to flourish. But how? What is the purpose behind your purpose? What is the purpose behind your purpose? You see, Paul, Saul, excuse me. I'm going to get to Paul now. Stick with me, guys. Stick with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You guys are with me. Say amen. Let's get right here. That's the point. The point is to be and understand what God has for you. And that it, it just penetrates through your spirit. Hallelujah. So your purpose. Saul had a purpose. He thought he was pleasing God. He was very successful doing it. But it wasn't until the day that he was on the road to Damascus. And in Acts 22, it says that suddenly a sound and a rushing wind came from heaven and he fell and he became blind. You see, that suddenly, I feel like that word today is a word for most, most of you watching. Because guess what? I'm not here to talk about, maybe you need to change your overall purpose. Maybe there's different areas of your life that you need a sudden change. Suddenly, you see, Paul, Saul didn't become Paul until he had an encounter with God. Put it, put it together because that's what happened. Put your, put your hands together if you believe it because that is the truth. He had a purpose thinking that he was pleasing God, but it wasn't until God showed up. It wasn't until he had an encounter. It wasn't until Ananias went and laid his hands on him. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He repented. He said, God, forgive me. I know that my purpose before had nothing to do with your purpose. You see, your purpose in life has to be aligned with God's purpose. Because the real purpose is where do you find it? In the word of God. How many people think they know what they're doing, think that they're going in the right direction? You're probably headed in the wrong one. But if you know that you're in line with the word of God, hallelujah, rejoice, rejoice. And if you are not in line with the word of God, then your purpose needs to be in line with God's purpose, his word. And then you can then you have, then you'll be purpose driven, driven towards the driven towards the goal, driven for more, driven towards righteousness. In everything you do, you have to understand that there has to be a suddenly in your life. 
suddenly the Lord opened your eyes to something you need to shift. Suddenly, maybe your whole career needs to shift. Suddenly, say suddenly. Suddenly. And you see, when that happens, when you encounter God, he will, he will shift you in the right direction. And then you have to make a choice. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? You see, I want to make sure, regardless of my flaws, regardless of what it is I've been going through or what I'm going through or what I have gone through or what I may go through in the future, I want to be purpose-driven towards my king. I want my purpose to be in line with his purpose. Because you see, that's where the blessings are really going to flow. Don't ever get confused if you think that you're doing, if you even have a doubt that your purpose and your goal in life, if there's one doubt in your mind, get in the word. Because the Holy Spirit's the one that's going to reveal to you what it is you need to make an adjustment towards. So that your purpose is in line with his purpose. You see, what's your goal? Is it just to be rich? You see, there's nothing wrong with making money. And I'm bringing up money because we just brought up. And the thing is, money is one of the most talked about, I believe it's the second most talked about topic in the whole Bible. It's the reason why you wake up all the time. And it's the reason why, you know, wake up to go to work. It's part of our life. We need money to eat. It's, a, it's, an, important, it's an important factor in our life, right? And we, it's not that it's the most important thing. You know, it's good to, it's, it's, it's good to it's, money's not bad. The love of money is. That's bad. We had a series that we did here weeks ago or months ago called Money Talks. And it does. Money is an important factor. And to a lot of people, that's why Jesus said it is almost impossible for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Because a rich man already uh, uh, is already comforted with his bank account instead of with God. And you see, that's the problem. Where's your heart? But you see, I bring up money because your purpose in life is just to be rich. Then the purpose behind your purpose is flawed. Or are you trying to, be, are you trying to make money so that you can glorify God with it and help others and be comfortable at the same time? Whoa. Yeah. These are things that we have to think about in our life. And what's the motive? What's the purpose? Why do you wake up in the morning? Is it just to solely make money? Okay then your purpose is already messed up. That's already, that's wrong. I'm being honest with you. You can't wake up and the first thing in your mind needs to be, hey, I'm only doing, no, no, no. I am a child of God with, with what the Lord gives me. I can be a blessing to others, shine my light and let them know, hey, you see how I am? You see where God has brought me? I tithe, I sow. I am a person that believes that God is my stock market. God is my cryptocurrency. I don't care what happens in the market because God's the one that's going to bless me. God's the one that's going to open a door that no man can close in your life. God's the one that's going to bring you the woman of your life, the man of your life. Come on now. God's the one that's going to tell you to not do business with that person, to stay away from that person, to pray for this person. Come on, guys. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need, to, we need to change our mentality and understand that our purpose must be in line with God's purpose. Regardless of what it is that you do, regardless of what profession, you have to, when, maybe right now the Lord's revealing to you that some things you just need to may repent of. Maybe you've been a, a person that's super, uh, um, you maybe need to make a just. This is why you're here, and it's okay. This is a beautiful thing. That's why we come to church. That's why we listen to the word of God. It's a constant renewal of your mind. Maybe you're watching me right now. You know who you are. If you need to make certain adjustments in your life, right where you're at, pray to God. Repent and move forward. Hallelujah. This is the point of all this. Look what it says. Here's, this is, I'm going to read a couple of verses. Pay attention, church, on the important verses on God's purpose for your life. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. Look what it says, John 15, 16. These are all ESV, English Standard Version. Verse 16. You did not choose me. 
Pay attention, church. This is God speaking to you right now. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Hallelujah. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. Listen to the next one. First Peter. 1, 15 through 16. But as he who called you holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you another one. Are you receiving church? 2 Timothy 1, 9. Who saved us? us and called us to a holy calling not because of our works but because of his own purpose and grace which he gave us in Christ before the ages began that's the purpose of God right there before the ages began hallelujah go to first Peter 2 21 for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow his steps. Your purpose is found in Christ. I said your purpose is found in Christ so that you may walk the way Christ walks. We're called to be an image, a reflection of Jesus Christ. You may be doing some other profession, but me and you, when we see each other, regardless if I'm up here, down there, regardless if I'm in one of my business ventures or you're in one of yours, you could be a business owner, you could be a, a manager of, of the Outback Steakhouse. Great, uh, glory to God, I like that restaurant. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if we're here, we know why, because I know that your DNA is mine. You are a brother. You are a sister in Christ. We're headed in the same direction, even though... We have a different de detailed one. Even though my purpose may be different than your purpose, we all together have an overall purpose. And that's to glorify Jesus Christ in all that we do. Someone say amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. And the purpose goes far beyond. Stand to your feet, church. I want to read this to you. Glory be to Jesus. Your purpose goes beyond just us here while we're breathing here in this earth, ladies and gentlemen. There is something called an eternal purpose. Because you know our God's an eternal God, right? Someone say amen. amen. Our God is an eternal God. He's always existed. He will always exist. We may not comprehend it. We're not called to comprehend that. His purpose is going to be, woof. We'll never be able to think the way he thinks. That's why the Bible says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. Look what it says here. Paul says it best. Excuse me. The Holy Spirit through Paul. Now, because now we're talking about Paul. We all maybe you don't know the exact story of Paul. But once again, I, I, I briefly mentioned it. We, I talk about him a lot. He's one of the pioneers of the Christian faith, wrote the majority of the New Testament. Hallelujah. How God used him. Amen. But look what it says here in Ephesians 3, verse 8. You have an eternal purpose. Let's go to Ephesians 3, 8 to 13. Look what it says here. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, the grace was given. This is Paul talking to himself. Excuse me. Writing about himself. To me. Though I am the very least of all the saints. This is the Apostle Paul bringing himself, humbling himself down. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles and the unsearchable riches of Christ. If you guys are not born Jewish, we're, we're Gentiles, just so you know. And to, look at it says, verse 9, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for the ages in God who created all things? Verse 10. So that through the church, 
the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Look what it says here in verse 11. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Verse 13, pay attention church. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. Your glory is found in Christ Jesus. You have been chosen for a divine purpose, not only in this life, but an eternal purpose as well, because God's an eternal God. And when you are walking in your divine purpose, when you are walking in your purpose, the reason why it's eternal is because your, your, your life's already, you're in God's hands. The day you pass away, we, li we, don't, live, we don't live from zero to 100. We live from zero to eternity, ladies and gentlemen. I heard that in a Sunday school years ago when I was a kid. I was my daughter's age, 10 years old. We don't live from zero to 100. We live from zero to eternity. The day that we pass, we may leave here, but we continue to live in paradise with our king. We're, we got a promise. So your purpose here is eternal, believe it or not, even though most people may disagree. But then other people will see you walking and see you flowing and see you moving above the waters. Glory be to God because you're moving in your divine purpose. People see that they're going to want to do the same. So what happens is you become a light to those that are filled with darkness. And then what happens is that light, glory be to the Lord, Jesus Christ, they want to do the same. They repent. Boom. That's eternal right there. That soul one day will be an eternal paradise, just like one day we will be the same. And obviously, then as more as the more you come, the more you listen to the word of God, you begin, you begin to learn more about what your purpose is in this life. And then you become stronger. You become, you get to know more. God reveals himself more to you. You get more revelation. You begin to be able to walk more in line. It's like, it's like every day we're, we're, we have to fine tune ourselves. It's like you ask the guitarist how you, how you tune your guitar, right? You got to constantly tune it so it's like the perfect pitch. You see, with our life, with the way we renew our mind, we got to be tuning, tuning, tuning constantly. So that sound becomes perfect. Oh. That was the spirit of God right there that just revealed that to me. I'm not even a musician. <laughs> I'm being serious. Hallelujah. We're all called to be instruments though. Amen. Thank you for that one. We're all called to allow God to flow through us. That's how we really flow in our divine purpose. Hallelujah. You received something this morning, church. Hallelujah. Now, before I, before I close, well, we're not closing just yet. I didn't even see the clock there. Thank God I had it on my laptop. We got time. We're good. We're not leaving just yet, but this is an extremely important part, if not the most important part of the service. And you see, the only way to truly be purpose-driven, the purpose behind your purpose has to be Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can get you to your divine purpose. You won't be able to operate eternally or here in this, in, in, in uh, I guess you would say, in our time here on earth. Because you see, once we're with God, then we're, we're, it's eternally perfect. We don't have to worry. We don't have the flesh anymore. There's, there's no battle in heaven. We're just going to be eternally praising our King. But you see here, Jesus died for the sins that you have committed and will commit later on. Because nobody here is perfect. Everyone has made a mistake and will make a mistake later on in the future. Because we're not perfect. We need the perfect one to abide in us. The perfect one to cleanse us. 
the perfect one to guide us. Hallelujah. And you see, you may be a good person. Hey, my abuelita told me I'm a great person. I, I give to the poor. I give to the needy. Maybe you are a great person. Amen to that. I applaud that. And thank God for your abuelita too. But you see, the Bible doesn't talk. The Bible says your works are as filthy rags, believe it or not. Yeah, I know. It's sometimes harsh. The word of the Lord could, could pierce through us and make us think twice. Why would God say that? Well, because God wants adjustments. Sometimes it feels nice to get coquillita and cariño. That means like to make it feel soft. But God, sometimes for in order for us to change, we need to be pierced. We need to be, sometimes we're going to say things that we don't like to hear. To make adjustments sometimes hurts. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes, yeah, we got to lower our pride. You're a super prideful machita, huh? That's not how you get into heaven. The Bible says, I am the door. Jesus says, I am the door. No man can come to the Father except through me. Thank you.